All right, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, whatever you may be, alien, not alien, I don't mind. Welcome to Title Tuesday, and we're going to try and do better than last time. Um, wish I did absolutely atrocious in, so uh, I should do better than that. And I've decided I'm going to play the birds this time. Honk, honk. I'm actually playing the birds opening which is basically a reverse dutch um well i say i'm playing it i'm, I'm going to play the king's gambit now because enough of the birds it's shit really it's a joke it's a very good opening um i'm uh, actually i don't know this move oh, i'm getting confused i'm actually doing a course on the birds for chessable it's an opening i've always dabbled with and uh had quite a lot of fun with i think you're supposed to go here but this is where my theory might run out are you supposed to go there oh i don't know i don't know the theory in the king's gambit it just it's just a lot of fun and do we kick this knight away may we may we and um now what how about something like this is this is this correct gotta watch out for bishop h4 but I think we can do this. Maybe we can play h4 so that square is guarded by the pawn. Um, okay, let's just try to get a bit of a flow. Um, so what I mean is I've got to try to move a little bit more natural. Just play play quick, good moves. That's my one thing I find in Title Tuesday. I'm a little bit jittery. And um, uh, you just the best, you know, the best chess is often just to play quick good moves you know and i say that and i slow down immediately now i'd love to play d4 so of course my opponent plays the good move and plays that move himself and now do i try to get a knight to e4 very bizarre position this already i'm not entirely sure where i'm going to put my king which is slightly annoying so let's get ready to castle this way and um, probably should play c4 at some point. I say probably, as it's a really weird position, isn't it? My opponent's going to castle queenside. Okay, let's do it. So let's castle. Let's take the bait. All pieces are now developed. What to do next is the question. Um, yeah, I don't really want to open up the h file. So I'm going to just keep it closed. This is interesting, trying to open up the G file and try to use the F6 square, I think. So maneuver, no, don't do that. Maneuver the knight to G4 in here would be uh, a logical idea. So let's do that quickly. And my bishop also has some potential ideas. I mean, my opponent, okay, but this one, this one is very risky because of bishop g4 which I think my opponent has missed now can I play that now got to watch out for this one and grab this guy here let's do it let's do it quick now I've got queen h3 is that a very good move forcing some retreating moves my opponent is still holding on here. Maybe maybe this was not actually very necessary moving with this one here. Okay, let's go here. Trying to force my opponent's queen to a bad square. And my position should be very good now, but it's only a pawn. It's only a pawn. And we don't have any obvious way to increase the pressure at the moment I'm seeing. Is this one helping me? I don't know. Maybe. And I'm just going to try to make, give my pieces more option. Let's get my queen a little bit more centralised. My bishop here can now exchange itself off or come forwards. So my opponent takes the opportunity to come forwards first. And I just want to control as many squares as I can with my bits and bobs, my pieces. Um, it's probably a better move than this check, but 
We'll throw the check in because it gives my pawn a, a tempo gainer. And then maybe I can take here with the queen. Some ideas of this in certain situations. Also, maybe in here. I'm just making sure my opponent doesn't have any checks. And I'm trying to take this pawn. If my opponent swaps queens, well, it's very easy because I take the queen and I come forwards. These two guys not doing much, but my knight and queen are coordinating fantastically. And my opponent actually resigns there because it doesn't seem like there's any way that my opponent can stop this pawn going. And that does look pretty tragic. I can take there, take this pawn, take this pawn. And, and these, these pieces control everything. Now, do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And we're running at Ginger Gym. I only, I'll only say this a couple of times because, you know, it'd be nice to make some sales. A massive sale. Basically, every video course that I've ever created since a little wee child at, of the age of two um, is but, um, in a collection called The Ultimate Collection. If you follow the link in the description, it's on sale at the moment. And that's over 200 hours of instructional um, material so there's a lot to get through but there's some really good stuff in there and if you digest that over the course of like i don't know your life <laughs> or a month wherever you want you will undoubtedly become a better player there's openings middle games endings there's everything there and um for over 200 hours it is quite a lot of money still it's 316 dollars but it's normally 800 dollars and if you actually look at the price of other things on the market, like Chessable, you know, sometimes their course is like 20 hours for that. So for 200 hours, it's, it's you know, just over a dollar an hour for the best, you know, that's the best deal you're going to get to get everything I've created. So if you want to support, you want to get all my material, you can go and check that out. Just follow the link in the description. That would be lovely. And... Um, Let's now just see the game review. So that was that was quite an interesting game to get started today. Um, and it was a bit up and down, uh, as predicted. The opening maybe wasn't that successful. Um, but it got really good. And then I missed some chances. And whoa, look at that. A bit of a roller coaster down there as well. So my opponent actually had some move here. Um, my opponent could have won a pawn here. Really? How can he win a pawn here? It doesn't look like he can win a pawn, does it? Um, strange. Well, let's have a look. So that was that was right near the end as well. And apparently after king h1. So I just went king here because I thought it was safer to get my king off this file. Because then I can try and win this pawn. Okay, my opponent literally just attacked my knight. And that's how he wins a pawn. But I still have some advantage there, so it's not... It's not so bad. And when you have these very complicated and sharp games, it can go very wrong. And, yeah, you can see the graph. The opening... What, what did I play badly in the opening? So, knight takes... It, so, queen f3 is actually not the right opening move to play. So, it's good to know I'm out of my theory on move 4. Bloody typical, hey? <laughs> so, I expect a much more normal way to play is, is just knight to f3. But this is quite quite an interesting way to play against the King's Gambit. Knight f6, a very rare move. And let's see what I should do. So here, this is a bit dubious. I should move the knight here. And just play some normal moves, I guess. Like, you know, play d4 or d3 next move. That obviously is much more logical than what I did. Um, when I got some chance to have an advantage. Queen f3, not a very good move actually, because my opponent can even go this way, but d5 makes sense. And now knight c3 also seems normal, but what I played, not so great. Because his knight's really good here. His knight defends everything. He's, I mean, he could even put his pawn there uh, straight away. It on the next move and it's not really clear what I'm doing I need to get this kind of set up like an advanced French with my bishop here to have full flexibility but I don't I don't manage to do that so uh, 
there we go I might even you know what I might even change the color I'm, I'm feeling like I need to change a bit of the color today let's uh, let's see if we can do I'm, I'm gonna regret this aren't I uh, dark do we want a bit of wood a bit of glass that's very dark brown brown's looking quite nice I don't know what do you reckon about the brown board Ugh! now it's on the board I hate it don't like it I might have to go back to ICC that one is that is that a bit I'm trying to think what will what you know what color does my brain work best at does that, is that something you consider in life metal is that like heavy metal no i don't know which which piece is which i'm getting well confused here spinning out as usual with the different colors what colors do you like guys do you have a certain color i mean i should go for red being me hmm. not sure i like it i'm going back i'm going back to icc whoa what happened there as well let's let's not do that don't like that okay I tried I tried some different ones out and uh, I don't know I, I suppose it's like subjective yeah this I guess there's certain colors which um, your brain works better with I, I would you know visually that would make sense wouldn't it you know like uh, I, I don't know my favorite color I always love the color green because of the English countryside you know the color green is just like nice and smooth and beautiful dark green when it's been raining a little bit and you can look across you see the fields the meadows the cows having a little chomp and some grass having a big poo you know i love that it makes me feel good watching cows poo it's like a lovely pastime what are your hobbies watching cows poo i get very excited about the prospect of a good cow pat um very good for growing mushrooms apparently fields with cow pats that's what i hear okay so we got dutch and we're gonna go for the usual but what shall i play next i'm gonna i'm gonna play a5 knight e4 i've played many times before this, this used to be my favorite move and there's a very sharp line here and if my opponent knows it i could be in trouble but i like a gamble bit like Hikaru we like rolling the dice a little bit me and Hikaru and this move is this moves a bit wet my opponent would do better to take there because now I can get this e5 move in and whenever you get this structure well 99% of the time you're laughing and I'm gonna play f4 this is my go-to move because it gives me some chance of initiative on the king side this is a good move. My opponent sets up some checks. So I just step my queen out the way. I, I'm not even considering taking these guys because I like my structure. My structure is pretty nice. And that is a really slow move for my opponent. So I'm now... I guess he wants to move the bishop here. I, I mean, bishop over here looks natural. Let's also consider this one. I mean, is he going to get enough pressure against d6? I don't know. But I guess we now bring our bishop in. Because my queen might want to defend this. And I've also got rook c8. I'm probably threatening pawn takes pawn now. And to take the knight. So he has to move his knight. And then maybe f3 and I can start, start an attack. I also have d4 on pre. So... I've had this kind of opening in the Dutch many times before. This is another Dutch, which is really good for black. Um, well, I say really good. I, I, I enjoy these positions. Okay, now here, he might take, take, take. But I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, let's bring it. Because my knight can cover. And now, now I, feel, I feel I should play f3 and just try to checkmate him. Like, s swing it around and kill. Try to checkmate on h2. My other geezer, that's what we call the rooks in in London, the East End. Geezer, all right, geezer, over you come, mate. I can bring this one in, but the big threat is this and... Sorry, I'm, I'm just thinking, if I take here... 
take okay I think I think he has to do this and after this one we come here how's he avoiding checkmate put that in your pipe and smoke it my dear friend that is an absolute onslaught now do I take the rook or do I take with the bishop this is like a sexy decision I think I'll take the rook because I like forcing and threatening checkmate and we'll take that one off the board boom oh sometimes I make the Dutch look like a force win and in these moments we should put our little pinky finger in the air and have a sip of hardcore it should be tea but it's not it's coffee I felt last week I was far too chilled out playing with my blue lotus flowers that I was um, drinking. And uh, blue lotus, not sure it's good for chess. Um, <laughs> blue lotus drinking tea made of blue lotus leaves. So I've just gone back to hardcore coffee. Uh, it is in the afternoon. I shouldn't be drinking coffee in the afternoon, but you've got to have a vice in life. And as I'm not drinking much alcohol at the moment, or or smoking much, I, I do. I'm still smoking like a cigarette, very occasionally, like once every couple of weeks, which I'm trying to cut out. But you know, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. I was I started when I was very young, like 14 or 15. It was uh, you know, but yeah, I'm trying. Coffee is like my one vice. One of you know, well, one, you know, can't mention the other ones. Well, I can. No, it's basically I don't really have any vices except for coffee now. So that was that was that was tasty. That was a tasty game, no? Look at that! Oh my god! Who is a genius? Ninety five point two. Put that in your pipe, Kramnik, and smoke it. Boom, leakly boom, boom. And I mean the reason. I'm I generally feel I'm a bit stronger than Magnus about 2900 elo especially in the Dutch and the reason I got such a high high thing though and, and this I think this game you know it, it was pretty easy and, and generally this this shows you how experience learning middle games can just make you a better player and what I mean by that is I, I mean the Dutch is maybe not the best opening but who cares this is maybe not the best opening, but I love it. And um, it shows you how just knowing the right ideas. So all of this stuff I've seen before up to F4, because I have many much experience in it. And I know what kind of pawn structure I want. I know where all my pieces want to go. I know the kind of tactics we're doing. I know the kind of rook swinging we're doing. I know what you're supposed to do. This is like middle game now. And just knowing all of these ideas, I'm surprised the computer gives it as even still because I'm very much in favor of Black's position, but obviously I'm maybe biased. But go, you know, knowing the ideas shows you how you, sh you should persist with openings. Don't just learn an opening and then be like, I'm a bit bored of that one. Give me enough, you know. I, I, you know. Let's try something else. You've got to persist, and you've got to know the middle game ideas. It's not just like memorizing. And I think this is saying, you know, which low rate players don't realize. You know, just try to get to grips with. Ask yourself, where where does each piece go? You know, in the middle game, and and know where it goes against various different setups, so you know what you're trying to do in the middle game, and then you can have games which play itself. And you can see I'm very comfortable in the Dutch, but sometimes when I get other positions I'm not as comfortable because I don't know where the pieces should go I've got to think and that ain't one of my strong points thinking I'll leave that for the more classy uh, players out there uh, <laughs> I just play I just play what I see simple guy uh, I am a pretty simple guy actually and uh, I kind of prefer it that way I'm not you know simple is good in my eyes let's not over complicate um, they say that about anxiety, don't they? And I kind of realised that that with anxiety, like the the brain, whatever you think in the brain is always worse than the reality, and you can make it so much worse. The reality is never as bad as what you make it out to be. 
Not always true, <laughs> but it's it, it does help thinking in the right way. Not thinking, and not thinking is a real skill. It's a very Eastern philosophy, isn't it? Taoism or something, or Taoism. Not thinking is as hard is harder than thinking sometimes. You know, you can't always clear the mind, but you know, just trying to trying to uh, not think is 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 a real skill actually, and I found that. But um, not thinking you will think better. It's weird, isn't it? Life is weird. It's like everything that's fun fucks you up, basically. Nearly everything that's fun, like, you know, drinking fucks you up. You know, like smoking messes you up. Eating eating doner kebabs and burgers. Love it. Messes you up. Um, you know, uh, anything pretty much that is enjoyable, it messes you up. So you've got to have a good balance. We only realise these things too late, though. Look at me, the ginger philosophizer. Um, and I can't. Uh, by the way, I can't wait to have a drink, a uh, proper drink, after my boxing bout is done. So it's about one month until this boxing fight that I have. Um, I say boxing. It's chess boxing. Thank goodness, because if it's boxing, I, I would get well. You know, I would get battered. Um, and chess boxing chess boxing is hard enough uh boxing is incredibly hard i mean i'm 44 years old so it's going to be a real challenge but as i said before it's it's good to have challenges in life okay and talking about having challenges this guy is why do i always get double black am i am i allowed to moan you know i i, I always get okay we're just going to go we're going to go sicilian and I don't think he'll play main line. He'll play some other shit like this. This guy is really good. And um, uh, young, strong German. Um, and I always play this move. Uh, I, I and here a six they they take, which is which is a little bit annoying. Just wondering if you play this. For I'm trying to trying to again remember remember my bits and bobs uh i'm gonna go here c3 though then can i can i play okay right i'm gonna play the main line which is knight f6 um it's a little bit wet of me to maybe do that i'm gonna go here as this is the sharpest uh variation d4 takes takes bishop g4 and it's a bit dubious as everything i do is it is seems to be but it, it i i don't mind being a bit dubious if i get the initiative if i get the attack and my two plans in this position revolve around bishop here or g5 and this is this is um the dubious line i mentioned where we often double white's pawns here but our queen side may well fade to black so pawn here knight d4 is uh i think the trendy the trendy stuff and uh if white knows what he's doing then i'm sure white's doing well but um you get some play because because uh white's white's king side is a bit messed up right so i might lose these guys over here um this is true can't remember the exact line that I should be playing. I don't really want his knight floating into b6. So I've got to stop this. And if a4. Then do I move the rook? Or am I worried about the exchange here? Do I take the pawn and just be like, okay, so what? Take knight here, rook b8. Um... Rook here takes takes rook a seven. His knight's going to come to c six. I'm going to take this pawn. I don't know if this is a valid option. And I'm going to go here to stop something coming into b six. Yeah, this is a good move. This is the move I sort of feared because he might take here. And my light squares are very weak, so I probably should take this one i don't know if this is theory or not it's very possible it is 
And now, of course, I would love to get castled, which I'm sure my opponent will stop. I might have to put my king here. My opponent does stop that. Now, he's got great compensation and I haven't managed to uh, uh, get safe here, have I? And bishop a6 is frustrating. So I'm not happy because I have to, again, this is the thing. I just needed a couple more moves to get castled and I, then I would have been very comfortable throwing stuff over on the king's side. But this this is this is like I'm going the wrong way. I mean, I'm still the exchanger, but I need like one, two, three moves to complete things over there. And he's got many ideas like this, which are frustrating to say the least. Grabbing the pawn there, I don't like. He's got. What about G5? Seems ridiculous that move. If Bishop takes Rook G8, and I'm just trying to get my king somewhere. So okay, so we get the king there, but maybe maybe this is just too late now. His pawn is causing all sorts of annoying measures so we have to come back and try and plug some gaps here maybe how is that because otherwise bishop a7 probably wins so i think we have to play this d6 might just be good now but still got bishop here i'm just trying to hold d6 takes rook here is the issue do have queen there but then the knight comes to f5 I don't really have anything there he's obviously got other very good ways to play this and um, the position is uncomfortable <laughs> he's got queen now coming in here so I need to just throw this in I, I'm maybe just too slow here but Queen here probably does the job. I didn't really ever get anything, did I? My opponent just got that initiative early on. I don't really see what I'm doing after Queen here. I mean, take... Okay, he's playing it very safe. Which he didn't necessarily need to do. He could have just come in. But this is probably winning because this is still major. So I need. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to complicate uh, the scenario. Shit, this one. This one. I mean, checkmate. So we go here. So I'm going for some desperate kingside shite. I'm going to be quiet because it's intense and messy. Awful move I played and it's checkmate now, isn't it? Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, shit. Maybe some chances somewhere there, but be very intrigued to see the opening uh, again just a bit of rustiness there so so um i need to uh do a bit of work on my opening so this is the key position and this is where i had the choices one choice and probably the best choice is just to get bloody castled because then what i need to do to get some attack going is bishop e7 castles knight h5 f5 so it takes me like four moves so i was a bit concerned about this here here takes takes and him 
trying to go for queen exchanges, but maybe I just have to allow this and play. So I probably... I can keep fighting. I'll just put the game review on just to see if I missed any opportunities. And uh, it doesn't look like I did right. It looked like a very nice game for my opponent. Okay, he missed some chances, but the, as soon as the opening's over, I, I, I was struggling. So he, he played very well. And I'm keeping the balance now, but this move wrong. I start, I mean, I, I just probably got to allow him coming here. So can I, okay, I, bishop e7, I, I should just play bishop e7. Whether it's good or bad, I need to play this move. But f4, computer likes a lot. Now rook b8. Um, my opponent now takes over all the light squares. And again, maybe I should just play this, but he's he's a bit too quick over here. And you can see that actually from here on in, my, I think my opponent played really well. And uh, from here on in, I'm I'm kind of struggling. I say kind of struggling. I am struggling because I just don't get enough counterplay. You could see that I I've, I I was get I was getting some chances at the end, even though the computer disagreed. But I was managing to complicate. But around here, it's all one way traffic, isn't it? This was a very nice move, I thought. And um, I played g5 because I need to get my king a bit more thing. I, I thought I have g4. So I think I think actually, no matter what the computer says, I played this quite well in the respect that when your position is shit, there's no point just playing the computer's move where you're just going to be shit with no play. You might, have, you might as well make it a crazy pile of sh shit. Like, you know, the runny kind rather than the solid kind because... Your opponent might slip on the runny kind, but he's probably just going to kick the solid kind out of the way. So make it runny poo. And this is what we're doing. We're trying to make it runny poo variation. Maybe rook g8 and g4 it is worth a punt, but I really want to get my king out. And later on, I thought there were some chances here because... I, but there's not, is there? I'm just, I'm just hallucinating. This move... My opponent plays well, covers all the squares. And again, he comes back. All right, well, big game here. At least I get white, uh, and it's much easier white. And I'm going to stick with the birds. Um, like I said, I'm doing a chessable course, a very good course. Um, the author of the course is Raven, Grandmaster, and it's really interesting. He's come out with some brilliant ideas in the birds. Uh, and I'm very much liking the course. And uh, this is one of the advantages of playing um, the birds. You get a chance to finish Chateau, this, this guy here. And um, I'm going to play it kind of just quite sensibly for now. C4 is um, another way you can play. My opponent's also playing quite a good setup. And... Um, uh, I normally put my knight in here now, but there is other ideas, and I'm just trying to think. Here, knight here. This is the problem. I want to play this normally, but it's not it's not working so well in this position. So let's let's come in. I'd love to double my opponent's pawns. Um. Otherwise, I'm just creating some squares for my pieces. So yeah, I'm just in the middle of filming this course, so I'm trying to. Uh, as everyone does with chessable course, memorize a lot of Raven's lines. But I think pawn takes the most aggressive. Let's do this one. But there's there's a lot of lines in the course to get my head around it, as it's a lifetime repertoire. But what I've seen so far, I think the course is fantastic. Okay, I'm going to try to get rid of this bishop because it's his only developed piece. And I would love to get my queen in. So he, he wisely has not allowed me to do that. And now where do I bring my knight? And actually, I, you know, I'm not sure how I played this now because my pawn is not 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 happy, is it? So don't like the way I played this. A little bit, I played it a little bit slow. How do I stop his queen coming here and his knight coming here? Okay, I could come up, but then c2 drops. Do I have to give up here, 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 h5? And then I have this weird move. Okay, that's quite a nice little trick. 
So queen here, here, h5. Bishop takes e6, I think works. Pawn takes queen, takes queen. Queen takes queen. I have the intermezzo bishop d7, which at least means I don't lose a pawn. So this move, this move is quite funky. And I've also now got c4 ideas when I can hit things on this diagonal. So this is interesting. For example, queen here, c4 is very valid. But then knight takes... Bishop takes, queen takes, knight c3. Maybe some play there for me, actually. Because his king is stuck in the middle. But I'll have to think. After this move, which is, is certainly playable, what do I play? Do I play c4, trying to open things up? So let's have a look. Takes, takes. Okay, so he's going, he's going another way. And now here... This, this, this square maybe seems a bit more to the point because I keep on f7 uh, of course he can castle queenside which he does and now d4 or c4 which one I'm going to go c4 because this pawn I want to keep there because as soon as this pawn goes forwards or something his pieces have a bit more freedom and he might be coming in, but we've got to develop anyway. Don't really have much choice there, so let's bring this knight out. And with opposite side castling, there's always going to be a lot of mess. D4, knight e4. I think I'm going for. This is even interesting, trying to destroy pawn structures. Now, here I do have f7 at some point, and I'll probably do it straight away. And against this move, which I clearly saw... How did I miss such a simple move? That, that, that's beyond me. Uh, well, I, I thought I had rook b1, but I've realised the bishop is here. Which is uh, just uh, really not good. And here, he comes here, which is the other issue. Do I have to play this and take with him a king? I don't really want to do this. But it's okay. I mean, it's not too bad. And I have some centralization and... Bishop here, though. Yes. He's coming straight in, isn't he? So here and here. He just takes... I can't allow a rook to get here, so I need to exchange rooks. And this is not looking good. Do I have knight d5? Well, like I said, the runny kind is better than the other kind so we're going for the runny kind here and the discombobulate ta 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 need more coffee um but yeah i mean uh i think it was going right but i have to look at this line afterwards again that's a good thing with title tuesday we're always learning and now queen coming one of these two squares i, I feel is normal i'm a little bit exposed uh, but I'm coming through the middle. Okay, well, this move he has here. Okay. Very complex position, this. Still very, very weird, weird position. I don't want to allow his queen in. Shit, I'm allowing his queen in. Back we go, because we don't want to allow the queen in. But how am I playing this structure? I don't know. Okay, I want to play e4, I guess. He's playing this well, is he? Comes in here, rook e3. Takes here. It's on my queen, fuck. Still a big fight this game. Don't want him taking that pawn really, but what can we do? Okay, now I can take on a seven with check. The king looks exposed. And it is exposed. Run, baby, run. We'll try to get the queens off because it's exposed. Oh, what a 
complicated position. Well, I'm just trying to get as many queens as I can. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, we're winning at the end there, but uh, we definitely weren't winning all the way through that one. Uh, if in doubt, just get queens. Um, is the title of my new chessboard course. If in doubt, get as many queens as you can. And uh, the opening, let's have a look. So I, I, I wish, I, I mean, chess.com now own chessboard, don't they? And one thing I, I created with some programmers with G-Chess was the ability to cross-reference your Blitz games with chessable courses. And we created this software. And you could even get an automated report to your email about where you where you differed in your Blitz games to the chessable courses. I love to have that on chess.com. Like um, now, rather than this, this game review malarkey, I'd rather it told me, well, you, you diverted away from your the chessable course. Because this is a bit superficial, I feel this. And I, I'd rather have it saying you diverted away from the chessable course on move X. You should have played this, which is recommended by Raven. You know, I'd much rather uh, we had that kind of thing because then I'd know in future immediately rather than scrolling through or cross-reference it with the, another window how to do it. And we did this with G-Chess. I think we did some really quite cool things considering we're a team of like three, you know, and there's a team of 400 with million people with chess.com. But that would be cool, right? Just so I know immediately what I'm doing, what, how to improve in the opening. I think you might have to pay for this, obviously. Life is about that nowadays. But let's let's have a look and just try to think what... Uh, I'll have to come back to Raven's course and, and remind myself. But uh, I, I'm already thinking that here there are a couple of better moves I could play. Uh, first of all, my bishop on e2 is all right. Um, but... In, in these structures, because my opponent's played a6, I think that's a bit of a waste of time because I've got the white pieces. I, I think putting the bishop on g2 is more logical. Uh, and mainly the bishop because this is a very nice diagonal later on. Uh, and mainly because then we have a nice attractive setup with d3 and queen e2. So my ideal kind of setup in this structure would be something like this. Let's say it does the same again, for example. And then I can go d3. I don't have to worry about knight g4 now because I always have queen e2. And this kind of idea I, I quite like. And I can play like h3 first. I'm worried about that. But the way I played it, uh, so the other move I'm just thinking of here, which I was very tempted to play, was knight e5 immediately. And I, and I think that could be very interesting uh, as an option here as well. And the computer's starting to warm to that. And this is probably what I do in the future because... He's wasted a bit of time. I've got the white pieces. Let, let's try to double his pawns or now get similar to the game, but without that bishop being on a good square. Because in this case, he's a lot more passive. And this, this seems like a very interesting position to play. If we go back to the game, uh, castles is obviously all right. Uh, and I wanted to play d3, but now, now this is a little bit more scary right because I can't defend e3 in a normal way I'd like to play this but I can't the other problem you get in these positions is you'd like to play knight c3 but d4 is is a problem so you have to think about that knight so this seems all right this is okay maybe and now rook takes f5 did that did the computer recommend that what is what is this and bishop f3. I love the idea because I love sacrificing. And the point is, this is a beautiful idea. I mean, obviously, it's it's very unclear. But the point is, we're going to use our bishops. And black's pawn's quite weak here. This is quite a sexy idea. This is the kind of plan I definitely play. I like it. I like. I mean, visually, you have to see it, say, do you like it or not. So this is this is a cool move. Rook takes f5. Sexy. That is sexy shit, which is the best kind of shit. And here, maybe I should play d4, but I saw this tactical idea of queen here, here, h5, bishop takes e6, which does work in my favour. And I have to say, after queen here, 
Things started to go a little bit, a little bit. He played very well now. I'm not sure about c4. In hindsight, I think I should develop my knight first, and that would. Okay, the computer thinks roughly even. That's you know with a position I'm, which is exciting. Opposite side casting, uh, and that's kind of what I want. This move seems maybe a little bit extravagant. It's a kind of extravagant. You know, you go to a pub and you you order a, a bottle of I don't know Bollinger rather than a, a pint of lager, and everyone looks at you like you're a flash bastard. That 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 feels like this kind of move. This is the Bollinger move. It's not really needed, and it's a bit over the top. And I've never ordered a Bollinger in my life. Uh, and people look at you because they're like, "Yeah, come on, you can't really get away with that." It's like you know, there is a financial crisis going on, which you're a part of. Just have a beer. And this move was just I just I just forgot about. I'll be honest, I just forgot about D two. Which is incredible. I mean, maybe I could play it as a sacrifice of rook f2 here. This would be a much better way to do it as a sacrifice, but it's not needed. And around about here, yeah, something like a4, a5. And it's still very complicated and um, position. And then later on, my opponent is obviously doing well. But we got a, a big mess around here. And it, it's kind of roughly even, I think. A, a, good, a good fight. This pawn on d6, this was a good way to discombobulate because I've always got compensation. And um, I, I waste some stupid tempo here. And, um, you know, I, I'm really... Uh, felt like I'm, I'm struggling around here, I'll be honest. But b6, I think, was a mistake because it leaves his second rank very weak. And now we're back in the game and who knows, you know. And I, the only plan I could see was to push my pawns. But my king is exposed. So it's maybe easier for me to play because I just push pawns. And he has to find the right way to get to my king. And uh, I didn't realise there was a draw here. I thought I could come this way. Uh, and maybe the draw is best. Any game still going on? Let's have a look. Doesn't 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 seem like it. So we're on three out of four. This is already better than last week. I feel I feel a lot sharper this week than, than last week, even though the games have been uh, a bit all over the shop, shall we say. Um, but three out of four is a solid start. But it's this middle section. I've got to have a good middle section. Now that I'm warmed up, and I'm warmed up okay, there's no excuses. Let's just try and have a good next four rounds. Because if I can score heavily in the next four rounds... I'd love if I can get to eight out of eleven again. That'd just be phenomenal. So come on, let's do it. Eight out of eleven. So yeah, you might be wondering what else is going on. So like I say, I'm just sort of I have this chess boxing fight against. Uh, uh, it's actually for the British chess boxing heavyweight title, and um, you know I'm not a boxer. I'm 44. I'm trying to learn to box, and I've realised how hard boxing is, how much of a tough sport it is how incredibly brilliant boxers are and how how fun it is uh, i actually enjoy getting hit in the head some for some bizarre reason i love i love uh the sport of trying to score points and stuff i can't really move i've got i've got concrete legs and and uh, a concrete body uh which is not actually good because you want to be more fluid and be able to dodge and weave can't do any of that shit um but it's going to be you know, it's going to be a bit of an experience isn't it getting into the ring for the first time and um uh, the one one thing that actually is it's a bit harsh but the one thing that's making me feel a bit better is that my good friend Lawrence Trent you might have seen his chess boxing fight and he just froze right and I, I'm thinking well I can't I can be as bad as that but I can't be much worse so poor old Lawrence he just froze so it's it's that's him so win this one four out of five, and this is this is actually a very interesting idea. Which I was, I played the birds in a tournament a number of years ago, and um, Grandmaster Jonathan Parker said, "What happens if you play f5?" And we discussed it, and we came up with the idea of doing an accelerated froms gambit. And this is the gambit idea, and. 
the the great thing about the birds now I'm threatening probably a check here is that the bird's opening is um sorry I'm just thinking of the best way to to continue the party and I, I think we're gonna go for this because it's mental is that you get positions which are so well was so unexplored and the opening is so saturated nowadays I don't want to play 400 moves of, of theory I, I want to I want to kill and I want to get interesting positions and that's what we're getting here it might be completely unsound what I'm doing but I don't give a damn it's interesting and is this move a threat well my opponent thinks yes and I think we should probably take this one and a bit like a king's gambit I don't know maybe I should have maybe this was another option very interesting position the pawn is maybe not so important this move is this move is then my king I don't know I need, then I castle queenside this move is annoying because I want to castle or put a bishop here and of course he's played it now f5 do we put the king here he's going to castle this one is why is this on my radar this move can I go here and go I mean I'm going mental here aren't I I just realised how bloody mental I'm gone here ok I think I need to put the king on g2 very weird position very very weird Not sure how. Okay, I'm gonna go here because we know what kind of shit we're going for. Why do I do that? Do I? I mean, I want. I thought I could go bishop here, but then this one drops. Okay, I bluffed him. Didn't really know what I was doing there. And if I go here, bishop g4 is a very uncomfortable pin. But then h5. <sighs> this is mental. Okay, we've got to go for it. Does my queen try to come to g3 in some lines? Like here. And now here, rook takes is what would scare me. Bishop takes, queen takes. Queen g3. Absolutely crazy stuff. Rook takes is definitely feels like the best move from him. This move, this move I was much happier with. I mean, I might even go here to stop that pawn from moving. I, I know I'm two pawns down, but now, now, I have something. I don't know if it's enough, but it's something. And uh, we have a mess now. Uh, this one. Do we take here with something? So complicated these, these positions. Okay, I'm gonna go here and continue playing like an absolute nutter. Um I mean is this game it just doesn't resemble chess, does it? I don't know what it resembles. Jenga. <laughs> yeah, okay. You can go there. Now Queen D2 Rook g3 to here. I mean, pawn here he takes. Here, not okay. Let's go queen d2. I mean, what a position. What a complex position this is. These are. So, knight g4. He finds a good move. Knight g4. Very good knight, that. And um, do we come in? Then pawn here, and then back. Jesus, I'm getting so confused here. Do we take and then come in? Okay. Don't like this, but it's so crazy this position. 
and h6 check with the knight king h <sighs> so confused by this I'm gonna go here first because that just felt scary but I wanted to maybe get my knight the other way now let's get the rook be quiet and play. Shit, that's good. This is falling apart. It. Bang! Put down your pipe and smoke it, son! Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> oh, my words. Speechless. Does anyone know that Kreuder and Doifmeister song? Which is a mix, speechless, drum and bass mix. That, that, what the hell happened there, boys and girls? Look at that. Who <laughs> needs pieces when you got a little rook and a bishop, eh? Wah, wah, wah. Evil laugh time. <laughs> Let's scrub that body dry of that dirty shit that happened there. That was dirty as hell. But, man, that was, that was one hell of a game, though, and that... Uh, um, I, I mean, I'm completely lost at the end there, but my opponent just went the wrong way. He went the wrong way. If he goes up the board, he has the whole world in his hands. And I couldn't believe that he went back here. I was, I was trying to find the resign button. Then I'm like, what? He's gone that way. And that is a checkmate. <laughs> Boom! Unbelievable. Um... To put us on four out of five. It's only rock and roll if you like it. And that, I mean, when I say what a game, that was, as we see, a terrible game at parts. But, uh, yeah, we both played quite low. But, I mean, what? Ah, oh, of course, I could have gone rook takes h6. So, I'm, when I get short of time, I play like a moron. But, of course, here, it's easy to see. Rook takes h6, knight f7. Winning, what an idiot! And um, but in the opening, I mean, it starts to go wrong around this point, and maybe it was something like bishop takes here. So let's have a look at this position. It was a fascinating opening, and I mean, this is maybe a, a completely new unplayed position that we get here after g4. I mean, it's a bizarre position where I'm trying to go here and bring the queen out. My opponent plays this move, and maybe I should take that one. But this is obviously kind of intriguing because of the check. And now I should try and get the bishop to this diagonal. And th this did seem right, didn't it? It even says I can swap queens here. H4 is one of the better moves here, of course. My king's actually quite safe here. I love H4, H5. Why? Why am I not playing h4 enough now nowadays? Nowadays, guys and girls. I don't know. h4, h5, attack him like a lunatic. Just push like an absolute class A. -er. This moves a little bit. It doesn't really do anything. And we get this very weird position here. I mean, this move is just nonsense, but okay. It makes no difference h4 and I'm just trying to attack here and this was a good move trying to come in here and I have to say after f5 
My instinct is right. He should play rook takes f5 because he wants to... Who cares about a rook, you know? It, it, it's, it's... And then after rook takes f5, I was going to go h5. Okay, but we're in with the next game. So let's see if we can... Let's see if we can win. Obviously, it's better than losing. Have I played this guy? I feel, I feel I've played this guy before and I lost to him. So let's go with a Sicilian and we're going with a dragon. And I'm going to go mainline dragon because it's a lot of fun. And we're having some fun today. We're playing we're playing lunatic chess. Now this line is not very good. Do not play this at home. But why why am I playing it then? Yeah. Um but it can lead to some crazy complications. Uh Now, the crazy complications occur after this and this move. Sacrificing a piece. Put your mental helmet on and pray. And this is this is all this is all very. I'm going to keep that bishop. This is all. Um, this is all okay, except that there was a very sharp line here if they give their queen up. Now, we didn't take my pawn. Now, rook here. Do we go knight in? Let's go knight in. So I've got bishop f5. I didn't want to play bishop f5 immediately because of knight h4. But this way, I'm trying to get this, and I'm trying to use my bishops to create some chances. Yes, I'm a piece down, but I really don't think it matters in this position. Now, if he takes here, I can go knight takes. Otherwise, I think I'd be in trouble. And I'm trying... Don't move the queen there, because knight e7 is checkmate. God, that would be embarrassing. I'm trying to create maximum... Mayhem. What am I doing today? I haven't had my medicine. <laughs> I feel I feel I'm lacking some medicine or something. Caffeine. Why? And um I really need to calm the fuck down. Uh, and what's going on? I mean uh it, it's pr okay he's given up his queen so he's also joining in the the madman Okay, now I've got to get what someone else can count. I can't count this position. Bishop here, f6. It's probably even. He's got three pieces, probably, for um, whatever the fuck I've got. And I don't know because I'm losing the plot. Here, knight here, and e7 is checkmate. Rook here, here, and. So confused at the moment. Life is so confused. Do I just give that anyway? I mean, I, I, I don't. Or, or do we go? Oh, I don't know. I don't normally get this bloody confused, but I'm really confused now. I think it's more important to attack than hang on to a rook. Who needs a rook? If he comes here, at least I get like a check. And his king can come here. But it seems it seems too tempting not to play. Now, which way do we go? Do we go this way? Or this way? Maybe this way? And this position, I, I, I don't know how to assess it, obviously. It's just, it's just stupid, isn't it? Now, here, I tack his rook. So I think it's very important to try and create frets with moves. And here... We create a fret. And um, such a weird material scenario. And e4 seems to be the move. My king, the problem is it always my king is like trapped with this pawn around it. So it's never, never smiling. 
Uh, and again, I'm not going to try and count the material because it, it will take me too long. And I don't know whose point's up. I'll probably find afterwards that it's dead even. Okay, now what the fuck is this? Now I have inroads here and here. Sunday morning, we're waking up. I'm so confused. Check doesn't help. I think we should go this way, but this bishop comes to g4. Um, okay, now this one, I thought I had queen here. What's happening? Oh man, I just blunder there. Ay ay ay. If I move my king, it looks so dodgy. If he moves his bishop, I take one of his rooks. This one covers my king on the long diagonal. This move may well be best. A very dangerous scenario. Might get checkmated. C3. Bishop D4 is checkmate. What the fuck is going on? And the time is ticking. Also for me, which is not good. So let's play quickly. I'll say that looks nice. Fuck! Fuck you! No! Oh, man. Just threw it away at the end. Oh, I knew my bishop had to stay on that diagonal when I moved it off. I just moved my bishop away from the diagonal I knew I had to stay on. And I just totally... I had 11 seconds. Oh, well, that makes up for the last game. Oh, mate. So easily winning here. I just like... Know that, I know that my bishop has to stay here. I talked about this bishop and anything. This is fine. Just anything except for moving my bishop off that diagonal. Anything at all. Ah! Oh, man. I, I can't take here because of this one. But any other move. Queen h3. Go for me. Oh, that's sickening. I'm so annoyed with myself. Really am annoyed with myself. Because I've been a massive score there. Five out of six. Okay, we've got to win the next two. Let's get to six out of eight. We actually got the better of him in the middle game. I think we played, as you can see from the graph, nicely. We played very nicely in a very complex situation and this was the biggest I had Mr. Mate in 10 that's when I start to get short of time and I just got a bit nervous to get a bit short of time and um, I just freaked out a little bit fuck so here let's see where the checkmate is I think it'll be easy Bishop c3 just stop his kick from escaping and then his king can't come this way. 
so easy. This one allows his king to come up. But even here, I don't need to move that one. But it is a mess. It was never straightforward because the pieces are all over the shop. But I think I play... I'm, I'm very happy the way I played. I mean, I, I think, like, in a very mental scenario... This is where computers are so strong, right? But in a completely mental situation, I think I dealt with the pressure very well here. I think I played very good chess. I mean, we got this position... And I'm very happy the way I played the middle game. The computer thinks I'm better here, but it's so... It can go either way. And this is a great move. This is a great move. And then I came up with this... Nice concept playing F5. And I'm completely winning. But I knew I had 22 seconds left. And I can't get this short a time in such a complicated situation. And I, I, I threw this away. This is mine for the taking. But... If we can win the next two, we'll be on six out of eight. And there's still all to play for. So this is a big game now. Let's win this to get to five out of seven, which would be a good score. We can still get nine points. And let's do it. So let's full concentration now. And we're going to get at least get a Dutch. We'll probably go for the A5. Motivated now to win the next two because then we'd be doing well a5 we're going to go for this line again it's quite an old line and that's why i play i play a lot of old lines and now this one is actually quite interesting i've had this before point is you meet f4 with e4 with f4 which is a weird concept but again kind of intriguing i mean, I, I don't really trust this line <laughs> but uh, it, it leads to sort of bizarre positions, this 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 idea. And now, can I play here? I'm going to play knight here first, but maybe I shouldn't have done that because now he can play e5. Okay, I'm definitely playing this now. The knight does indeed come in, but I think it's worth getting my... You saw I had this configuration in the other game that I won. And he's playing the same kind of stuff. Um, any threats? No. Let's move the knight back. It's not doing anything over there. I think this sacrifice is a little bit wishful thinking. So we'll bring it back to consolidate our center. Maybe something like this now is a good way to start doing bits and bobs over there. Should we go for that? Or do we go knight here first? Knight there. Okay, let's let's do this. It opens up my own king as well. I, I don't care about the pawn. But I want to try and generate on the king side. Definitely haven't had my medication today. Now if I can take the knight, I get this pawn. Should be alright. Otherwise I'm going for this pawn. And I'm trying to get rid of a defender of his king so my queen can come in. I've got to watch out for this knight b6, which annoyingly gets rid of my bishop which is a good attacking piece so here I could now flick in and I'm going to flick in this move because my knight gets a beautiful square and it's a bit strange but that knight was a great defender and my knight on e5 looks good to me I'm trying to get rid of his defenders and get ready for my queen to come in I don't even care about my rook anymore. If he if he comes to my rook, have my fucking rook, my friend. I'm flying. I'm flying like the wind. We're coming in with these two moves. These, these are my next two moves. This one is also potentially interesting. Flick the check in and then come to h4. Because I have f2. And we have an attack. That's all we can ask for. Bishop g4. A way to try and defend. He's gone back. Now f3. Without, I'm not even thinking about that move. My knight is sex. He's trying to defend this position. Queen flies in. If he comes here, I take on f2. He's going to have to take my bishop here. Because this is too strong a threat to deal with. But I've still got some 
this check anything no what am i missing it's only a check on d5 my king just slips away i'm getting rid of a key defender maybe he thinks his knight can defend his king but i very much doubt that here can he defend this position Rook here is the kind of beautiful move that would make the crowd go fucking wild. Excuse my language today. I'm just getting a little bit excited. And I have to play it. And I hope I haven't blundered. Rook g4. That is something quite special. Rook h4. I'm trying to divert his knight. If his knight takes my rook, I come in here to g2. Queen takes here. Check. Knight takes. Checkmate. Rook g4. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. How do you like those apples? How do you like those apples? Rook h4. If I want to be a little bit slower about things. And here it is. Let's put it in with a check. If he comes here, I take it. It's going to be the end. And there we go. How do you like... Those apples! Beautiful. Beautiful! Okay, it's more like it. That makes up for the last game. And on that note, I'm going to have a little wee. And do consider, if you want to play like me, which, <laughs> yeah, it comes with a health warning, do consider following the link in the description. It's 69% off. The ultimate collection over 200 hours of tuition prepared by me and you will become a better player with that and here is it is a lot of money but it's normally $800 it's over 200 hours and look what you get in this course you get all of these titles some of these titles are 15 hours long you get everything not just by me you get Gormali unlucky Ivan Sokolov you get the whole kabang. David Howell. That course on its own is a hundred over a hundred pounds. That 15 hours of David Howell. So do consider getting that. Follow the link in the description. It's only going to be in sale for a day or two. And I need to have a wee while you click that link. And bye. Well, thank you all for stealing your mother or father's uh, debit card, credit card, and um, buying the best thing you've ever purchased. Two hundred Over 200 hours of courses. I mean, a David Howe course on its own. That's 15 hours of David Howe. It's um, his best course on how he got to 2700. But you get everything. You've got a lifetime's viewing there, basically. And uh, we just put it on sale for a little bit. Try to generate some money as, you know, com comes in handy occasionally. <laughs> and um, there we go. So, all right. Uh, well, that, that was interesting. Another uh, mad, mad, mad game. And look, we're playing someone who, again, is like, literally, if that's him, he, he, he you know, he, he's like a little sprocked. I mean, and look at that. 94.3. Give me a Dutch. Give me, give me give me and we're getting we're getting some very nice attacking ideas here and again it's this formation right this is what i'm saying this is what i said about the middle game i mean uh it doesn't matter if you play slightly weird openings um and oh i love seeing i love seeing these little 
these little double exclamation marks, even though I think it's a little bit overdone. It doesn't matter if you play slightly weird openings. Uh, if you know the attacking ideas, if you know the the way to play the position, you can do it. You can play it. You can play. You can enjoy yourself. Play bloody chess that you enjoy. Don't play chess that you think you should play. Play chess that you enjoy. You know that's what it's about. It ain't about like you got to make yourself happy, not make it, not make other people happy. Um, and you can probably, you know, just don't. Who cares, you know? Uh, right. So we are on uh, five out of seven. And I haven't even looked who's playing today, by the way. But the standings at the moment are, as as such, probably some games going on. So, you know, it's it's strong. It's always it's always strong. And we're kind of up there. If we win the next game and we get to six out of eight with a break, I'm going to be very happy. You know, six out of eight, there's still a chance of getting nine points. And I only need to get 50% then to get eight points. And eight points out of 11 is an incredibly good score for an idiot like myself. We're swapping drinks now. We've had some caffeine. So we're now going to this crappy CBD drink, which is going to um, calm me down. So expect some very nice positional chess. Calm. Calm and smooth. It's been anything but calm and smooth today. Um, there's one game still going on. And this should clearly be a draw. But you can still go wrong in these positions, as, as I very much know. And, and Black's won a pawn. It's not a very good pawn, but it is a pawn. And White is trying to win this because White is the higher rated player. And there should be no chance you can win this as white. Um, really. You haven't got enough pawns. You've only got two pawns. But this could go on for quite some time. Let's move 124 now. And there you go. White has won a pawn. Wow. That was a big mistake from black. Because now, now there's some chances. White's pawns are better. Of course this should be a draw. But... White is pushing. It's amazing actually to see how these uh, higher rated players um, can put pressure on their opponent, right? It's uh, And here, White is now winning. I mean, look at that. From a dead draw position, it's getting blood from the stone. And, and you know, determination on its own can go a long way. And we're going to kill our next opponent, right? This is what we're going to do. Let's do it. Determination did it. So a big, big game here. And we're going to keep going with the bird shit. Birds, sorry. Excuse me. Freudian slip. Joking. I love the birds. Uh, I actually... Um, this is this is this is a good move, but Raven comes up with this very interesting idea of playing c4 here, which I've never seen. And then he gives this, and let me get this right, and now a stone wall set up. And this is a very interesting way of playing. Originally, when I saw this, I thought, yeah, I'm not sure, but then uh, I looked at Raven. I, I was just recording this earlier today, and I was looking at this position. I thought, well, yeah, actually, this position, I certainly prefer to be white in and this is something that raven uh looked at because this bishop is really bad and even this position it's a lifetime repertoire he goes into the depths of this. even if i lose this i'm happy the way the opening's gone and this this shows you some of the, the hidden ideas in this very exciting course that raven has done now i'm just going to play normal moves for now this move means he can't really castle king side and i'm going to start hitting him therefore on the queen side where he's a little bit weak and do we bring the queen out now or or do we wait i think we're just going to wait one move there's nothing going on over here rook c1 must be a useful move and this blocks my bishop in yes so what do we take with here i'm going to take this way surprisingly Norm normally capture the other way but this way seems quite intriguing. Now, or do I come... He, he, he wants to castle. Now here he will castle. I don't really want him to castle. So look, where are we, we have to go 
You can go king here, right? Interesting position. So I am now coming on the queen side, and his bishop is bad. Kind of like my position. I maybe misplayed it slightly, but he can go here, here, queen b6. Got a very nice square for my king there. Let's let's do this. Knight b4 just feels logical to me. His knight is very good though. Let's 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 not downplay that piece there. Now where should my knight go? Maybe we come here to control the c8 square. But this could be a good option for my opponent now. If I take, then he comes here. Mm. Don't really, I shouldn't really allow this move. You know, I obviously played it. <laughs> Takes here is 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 annoying. Is annoying. Okay, I'm gonna try and. Play on the dark square. Still, still, still okay for me. I mean, let's let's not panic. I mean, I panic far too much, and I know I can play good moves when I put my mind to it. This position is still absolutely fine. Yes, we both got good knights, but I got the C file. His pieces over here are not not great, so I shouldn't be panicking. Maybe I'm better. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh. Now, if I take this one, is he going to really take there? Why can't I take this pawn? It's going to go f6. And then I can take and go rook c8, but I'm going to take the pawn. Let's just work it out in a minute. Great GM strategizing there. Well, I mean, if you can't, if you can't see a, a, an obvious reason why not take it. f6, I do have some weird line. Queen takes here and rook here, but... I think just queen c6 centralizing seems better. So. Kind of want this one, right? This is this is what I'm. Uh, if he takes my pawn, then I, I come in with the rook. And otherwise... I got d4 for my queen. So I'm hoping we come here. But, oh, Shiza, he takes there. Fuck a duck. Why did I do that? Check here, check here. It might just be a draw, but I don't want to, I don't want to draw. Right? Rook takes here. I forgot he has check and takes here. And there might be a win there somewhere for him. Check here, check here. Yeah, this is this is another way you can play. You can play for the win like this. Now, is there any way I can avoid? This avoid getting the draw here. I mean, okay, maybe the draw's gone now. Maybe I just need to play. Check, check here. Maybe I need to draw the work, least of my worries, yeah? Okay, let's just see if he's got a win. He might well have a win. Maybe this one. And then this. Okay, he's playing for the win with this move. Now, I feel like I have to open up my queen's defense. is coming with power. Fuck! Still pinned.
Man. Fucking hell, Simon. Fuck it. Ah! Oh, Simon. Oh, I come so close in these games, but should never have. I've, I should never have got too greedy there. Um, again, I'm a bit annoyed with myself today because. Uh, and get in the position. So, I mean, around here for a start, I should never play Rook C, never play this one. This is just far too, far too much. Um, and right at the end there, yeah. Never that clear. I mean, okay, the opening was all right, but I started to go wrong uh, at this moment. And, um, I, sh I certainly shouldn't maybe allow this stuff. Maybe I should just play H3. So I think I sh yeah. I mean, in hindsight, hindsight is very easy. But he gets he get he made a lot of progress. So just go H3 and stop all this nonsense. And then then do the same thing. Why why allow allow him to get this clamp? H3 is a much better move with an advantage. And uh, right at the end there. Uh, okay, I mean, what do we what do we got? We got five, and there's a break here. Four games to go. Is that right? Four. How many games to go? Three games. Nine, ten, eleven. So we have to get three out three to get to eight points, which we got one time before. It's very possible, but that last game I just feel was a big, big game, and uh, it got really messy. And I, I mean. So I, I, I shouldn't allow that pawn to go as far as it did. That was just stupid. And, and he did create this chaos over here. And in this position, I've got to play a bit more a bit more sensible. But we still, I think, uh, we're doing okay here. But I played another bad move now, rook c8, just forgetting how weak the second rank is. Uh, this was This was a big error. And it's actually very hard to defend this. But then again, it got quite messy later on, I think. Because he had to play for the win. And this move this move is this move uh, lets me back in the game. And I was gonna play knight e8 now to get rid of this knight, which I did a bit later, but I did this to try and I thought I might need my queen to defend, but I just give him a big uh, a big pass pawn. And I thought, okay, we'll try to swap off pieces, but I didn't realise how dangerous this is. And even around here, I felt maybe it's not as bad, but it's just a queen. I can't defend everything. My queen comes, his pawn comes. It's too late by this stage. So this move e4, as the computer says, was, was the final mistake. And I should have rushed to get the knight off first. When it's not clear, actually, if, you, if I just spent a little bit of a moment more, how he can do anything. Because if you remove the knights on the board, it's okay for me. So knight e8. Okay, he can go h2, but then I then I play this check, and this position was what I was thinking, and I, I wasn't too happy here, but it seems to be okay for me because he need he needs to have that minor piece now to do something. He can't he can't really make great progress here just with the two rooks. And given time, I'll push. I've got a very simple plan, which is great for blitz. Push the a pawn. So if anything. Don't worry about, uh, you can't see the computer's assessment, but don't worry, even though it says it's 0 0.00, it's probably easier for me to play because I could just push the pawn. He's got to come up with the creative stuff. So another good opening, but my first mistake, why did I let his H pawn get so far? So as soon as he goes H4, just play H3. Uh, I mean, he might have one square for his knight, but that's much easier to deal with than what happened in the game because my bishop can just come back here. I can just take it off. And this stops all of his ideas. And I don't believe the computer is saying it's even here. I just don't believe it. Because I've got the center. I've got castled. And I've got play on the queen side like I did. So I, And I've got a very strong knight. And if he takes it, well, we get similar to the game. So I don't believe that, actually. I don't believe that that, that is the case. So missed opportunities there. And that means we need to win our next three to get a really good title Tuesday of um, 
eight points, which is going to be very hard to do, clearly. But let's see. Two out of the next three would be good, but let's go for three out of three. See if we can just get to that eight points one more time. I'm very capable today of getting three out of three. Missed opportunities in this title Tuesday. I've had some great positions, but there's been some very fun chess. And looking at the score group, well, you can see it here. You've got Dan Lazarek, Grischuk, um, blah, 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 Nepo. Um, the list goes on and it goes deep. And it's very impressive. And I think that's the kid. I, well, I say kid, that's the guy I played. And like I say, I've had missed opportunities. Did I play this guy as well? I think I play, did play this guy as well, didn't I? I uh, have done in the past. All blends into one. Hands, not winning it this time, I feel. And we'd be on that group of six out of eight had we won that last game, which there were some chances to do. But I just allowed that H-pawn to come too far. And out of 671 players, I guess we're in, yeah, I was going to say about 100th place. And I was one off, 101. Let's see if we can improve that. If I win the next two, we can get in the top, uh, top uh, probably 50, I guess, which would be pretty nice. So we'll see if we can do that. And I nearly even won on time right at the end there, didn't I? I actually... I actually you know, um, in this position, his time got quite, I don't know, was it here? Yeah, here, his time got quite low around about after this, but yeah, it's not enough. I mean, okay, uh, trying to win on time again. You know, what am I doing? What have I turned into? I've turned into this person who's trying to win on time all the time, which is just nonsense. Just trying to win on position occasionally. Um, but interesting, interesting games come on let's get the next three games going there's a break now as it's after round eight um so they have a little break for a little bit um this sale we'll probably stop it in a couple of days so if you are interested dive, dive in on it asap it's a lot of downloading you have to do uh, i don't know how long this whole download will take um does it say how many? Okay, it's videos over 200 hours. Oh my words. And what's my favorite courses here? You know, I, I really like um, Alex Alex's course on the London system. You get this. I think this is a really good course. And this course um, will teach you everything you need to know about the London system. Uh, and that on its own is like 115, right? So that's that's a big, big course. I thought Alex did a great job there. I really enjoyed some of the less popular ones, like Plaskett's Greatest Hits. If you want to see some great games by, you know, an English Grandmaster, then this this one I I, I think is a good little uh, a good little one. And his game against T Miles was a, one of the best games that a British player has ever played. So I really enjoyed that one. Non-opening theory. And. Uh, the ultimate attacking guide is is won by Lawrence Trent, and this this was a great way to improve your attacking chess. It's ten hours of like tactics, but explained in, in a really good way. I think Lawrence did a great job there. Um, so yeah, there's lots of stuff there. Endings, you got you got everything you want really with this course to. If you're new to, uh, new to Ginger GM. Right, it's a long wait here, isn't there, for the next game? Unless I've somehow missed it, which wouldn't be wouldn't be the first first time I've done that. Uh, come on, chess.com, just get your bloody games going. We want to we want to rock and roll. We want to roar and we want to kill. This is this is this is what we want to do. We, you know, no messing about. Let's uh, let's kill kill. We haven't had one E4. I feel he's going to go E4 now. I feel he's going to do it. He's going to go E4. I can feel it in my bones. We have had an E4. We had that We had that bloody dragon. Very exciting game, which I lost. We're getting, whatever's going to... Whatever will become, 
It's going to be exciting, I know. But let's win the first game. 8 out of 11 would be a fantastic score. And we can do it. We're capable of doing it. Let's get it on. Let's get it on with the Dutch. Get it on. Get it on. Oh, he's played a novelty. He's done a mouse slip. Well, okay. Um, I feel a bit sorry for him, but not that much. It's not, it's not the end of the world. He's probably just given away his advantage. And we're now going to go for our normal plan of trying to play e5. But it's not that bad. Not that bad, This what he's done. Bishop always looks good on this square. And now I will just play play like I normally do. I'm going to play for e5. I'm not going to try to take advantage of this because it's not easy. He's just, he's just lost a couple of tempo. So I'm going to do my normal thing, play for e5. And obviously... If you know me by now, you will know this is... It's funny, actually, because... Okay, I'm, I'm thinking if I went here, there might be a bishop a3. I was thinking about trying to get my bishop to a6 to take advantage, which I might still do. I didn't go e5 straight away because I didn't want to exchange queens. I feel like exchanging queens might help him. So let's now play e5. Let's do it. Because his king, his king is coming back around. And these loss of tempos, like I said, it don't matter so much. I'm going to do my normal plan of trying to embarrass, uh, embarrass things over there. And if g4, well, his knight should come there. That's actually quite an annoying move, but not many people play that, luckily enough. Um, I don't have to play for the g4 move immediately, but my, my positional idea is to go here and here to shut his bishop down so he can't move his f-pawn. I want to make that f-pawn uh, unmovable, but it does give away f4. If he ever gets his knight there, it can backfire in my face. Now, let's do this move, see where he puts his knight. If he comes here, we get my happy place. And if you see my games before, you know that I like the structure. You know this is something I aim for when I'm playing the Dutch. It's not a big advantage. It might not be, even be an advantage, but I feel it's an advantage because we kill this one. Clever move from him, I feel. He's trying to mean I can't move my h pawn. So we're now going to have to play on... The center, the king side, um, and the queen side. King side play is gone. Maybe I have knight f3 at the right moment, but we're going to centralize our, our pieces now. And we do that by also considering the option of going into an ending at the right moment. Because an ending, I don't want his queen coming in here, so I'll keep an eye on that. An ending... Is nearly good, for, nearly always good for black because these pawns are more of a target than my pawns. It's very hard for him to get at my pawns. Whilst I might better get his, but this is a clever move, maybe. Queen coming over here. Good diagonal for his queen, definitely. Is rook here something I should concern myself with? Maybe. I'm a little bit worried about... Oh, shit. That's a great move. Fuck. I'm, I saw the move and I didn't do anything to stop it. Bishop takes. He he just comes in. Why did I not... Oh, well, he didn't see it. Thank fuck. Okay, so I think I'm going to play c6 here. Because that would have been very strong. Maybe I, may, I have to play knight d3 if he'd have played that. But I think I'm losing had he played that move. Let's keep control of that square. Now, I, again, I want to play the, the ending because his pawns will be major targets. Now, knight d3. I want to get the queens off. This is, this is what I want, but it's not. You have to do it with uh, accuracy. So I think king here, rook d8, is one of the first things I can try to achieve here. I'm trying to see what he can actually move. If he see if he could get his knight here, I, I'd be I'd be positionally in tr major trouble. Now this one I, I I I I have to take here, and this is this has improved his position because this pawn is now good. But 
I still feel there's some weaknesses here. Now, if knight's coming here, do we go knight here? It feels like I don't really want to swap his bishop off. Why, why would I want to do that? So, therefore, we must come this way. And he cleverly wants to take here. But I feel that ending might be good for me. My D pawn is very strong. Okay, I'm going to go for it. I could be totally wrong here, of course. But my king is also very active. So this is what I was thinking. I don't normally like the rook against the two minor pieces, but the rook is okay against the minor pieces. This is a great move. He's coming here. Great move that was. Oh, well, that changes things. That changes things. Um, sorry, this is a very intense game, as they all bloody are. Okay, now I'm going to go for the G pawn. The rook, the rook is generally good in the ending against the minor pieces. This is like a known thing, but there are um, exceptions to the rule. Um, in earlier parts of the game, you want to have the knight and the bishop, but in the ending... These guys generally rock it out. Generally. And a lot of generalizations. And I'm saying generally a lot. But I'm just trying to get a queen. Which is... Let's cut the king off. And now try to get a queen. And I think we're going to get that queen now. Uh, and why not... Oh, why not get another queen? What's better than one queen? Two queens, I feel. And... Well, he can resign if he wants to now. Uh, yeah, as long as we don't take the pawn, which is his one trick, right? Because that's stalemate. But he's also going for stalemate there. So we just avoid his stalemate ideas. And I think we should be okay to... Uh, it's mate in two, isn't it? Or something, so... Make sure his king always has a square. And he's confusing me. And we get a checkmate. Okay. That keeps the dream alive there. Um, maybe an okay game. Uh, there was a couple of moments where I let him back in. But uh, I generally like those endings you get from the Dutch there. There's two games to go. Can I get to 8 points out of 11? Which is a big score. 8 out of 11 in this tournament where there's only title players. The best players in the world would be I've only done it maybe once before can we do it he's got 9 out of 11 uh, rounds down and there's 2 to go so I need to win the next 2 I'm on 6 points so we're not going to win the tournament but we're in a great position look nearly 700 players would be in the top 100 now let's see where we are but if we win the next 2 we'll be much higher they're going to get harder the games there we are we are oh we're still we're, well, we're still in where are we? We're, well, I don't know. We'll have a look at the end when we get when we win the next two. Now, we've got more points than that. Let's go up. Where are we? Can we see our name? Can we see our name? There's too many players. I can't see my name. Where are we? Where are we? I know I've got six points. But where's my name? There it is. 75th. Let's have a look at the game review because an, another fascinating game. Uh, I did tell you that as soon as I get this... Uh, chilled out drink on the go i'm going to be playing a bit more positional and you can see from the graph there that i think the the way the game went was pretty accurate and my assessment of that ending was was always good because i'm always winning there was you know you can see that uh around this point um he could have defended better but with my king coming in it, it, the ending i think was 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 well played 
The computer thinks it's, it's fairly even actually up to this point, except for a couple of missed opportunities. Um, well, d5, maybe the best way to play is bishop d7, because that pawn is probably going to drop. But this ending looked very tempting for me, and I, I like forcing um, the continuations if I can when I'm playing, you know. Uh, I think it's more fun to be on the side that sort of, you know, if you can see a forced line which gives you the advantage, then, 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 then why not? Why not go for the forced line? Two games to go, and I'm looking to get two out of two to get to eight points. If I get one out of two, that'd be a good score. And we're in against Josh Pem. Fucking hell! <laughs> I mean, this guy's good. This guy, this guy is one of the best online players in the world and he is turning on his computer as we speak uh joking and uh of course he's playing a a, a a bizarre a bizarre line which is fine he's having a bad tournament and let's just try and kill him uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna take this one quite seriously it's a big game and I'm just going to try and reinforce my center he's very quick Joss Ben let's make sure if his knight goes there I can take it and I want to I want to checkmate him clearly well let's move the queen over somewhere and c3 I think I can play just stabilize my center let's move the bishop to this square and try to checkmate him because that is the way I enjoy playing chess so I'm gonna come in and go for his king now I don't care about the queen side we're gonna try and kill on the king side queen coming over to one of these two squares pushing with this one going for the attack as much as can be. Where's the best square for my queen? I'm not sure. Uh, this one, if he takes to the queen, rook here, he takes my knight. Is there some shit like this? Don't see it happening. What about queen g3? Some shit with this. Going for the attack, but... Why, why not? If he moves his king, I'm going to come here and I'm just trying to kill him. Maybe I move this one in first. I don't know. So he goes here. Did I have knight of six? Maybe. I'm just trying to... He's got h5, no? Hmm. Yeah, oh, fuck's sake. Play these moves and then you just fall for some shit. Ah, oh, I mean, position so promising as well. Here and here. Just, I saw it as soon as I played it. He has to play it, otherwise he's lost. And I, I've allowed him to fucking play it. Stupid. Stupid idiot. And I, was, I don't see what I can do now. Uh, stupid idiot that move was it's annoying it's annoying when you you know you sort of do shit like that basically okay we have to go here I don't see what else we can do it's getting desperate did I have something else I don't know bishop takes oh, I missed that one as well oh no that was a mouse slip fucking hell I had a nice position there but um, just didn't take my time. Let's have a look. Okay, game review. And it wasn't maybe as good as I thought. But around about here, Bishop d3 was a mistake. So... 
let's go back there and see how I could have improved. I just sort of fell apart there with this H4 move, really, to be fair. And that's annoying because now I, I've got one game left. And, well, if I win the next one, I do get to 7 out of 11. Is Josh Penn going to play against Kramnik? Is, is that actually going to happen? Does anyone, does anyone know? I don't know if that will happen or not. I was joking when I said uh, turn his computer on. You know I was, clearly, if you watch this. I don't think he's a cheat, as I've said many times before. I think he's just a very, very good blitz player. So here I should keep this bishop, but I don't think this is a bad move. And this position to, looks quite dangerous. Maybe I should be going for this attack. Um, the computer thinks he's doing fine. But okay, this is a very aggressive try from me. Looks like a lot of fun. And the computer likes it, so let's go for it. And now he defends. F5 is, again, the computer's best, highest rated move. And this position, I assumed, was quite promising for me. Because I've got a lot of pieces around here. Now, move my rook in must be the best move. Why don't I do the natural move? But okay, this is also okay. And now, I played my next move far too quickly. But as we can see, it's not as clear as I thought. Saying that, though, I am still surprised that the evaluation is as bad as it is. I mean, not, not as good as... Not not as good as I thought it is. And what I um, Queen F3 is clearly the way to do it, isn't it? Um, H4, H5 just looked like a great idea. When If I get my pawn here, I'm basically winning because his queen's bad. But after my next move, I just overlook this move and I'm, I'm losing, basically. Um, now, I, I, I don't like Knight E3, which is an ending. This move is, is much more attractive. And even though it says it's even, I, I find it hard to believe that this is even. There is a danger that this this one is my one problem, but I've got I've got a lot of pressure on the king side, and the computer's top move is something pathetic like this. How can this be a top move? This is just this is just a really nothing move. And now the computer gives knight e3, bishop g5, knight here. It looks like I'm doing tremendously well here. So I'm surprised that. This is the top choice, but I guess black gets enough counterplay with his rook coming down. Oh, well, uh, the dream of eight points is done, but let's try and have a good end to the tournament. Let's try and um, win the last game and get to seven points. Seven points is still a very good score. And while we do that, uh, the standings at the moment, well, Dens Lazaric, if he w whoever wins this game will go into the lead. It looks like black's better here because black's got the more active pieces, but they agree a draw because white is also very solid. And then Dens Lazaric is a very solid player. So, okay. I maybe played on a bit if I was black there. But Now, Duda. How is Duda doing? Um, well, Duda, a pawn up, and he's got ideas of this, but most likely a technical draw say that I'm not sure because the king can come across and then up this is the way to try and win this so maybe maybe white maybe white will win this one he had 0.2 of a second there that's crazy white must be winning now two pawns up and now the king comes up this is good technique uh, and he's going to mop up the pawns now too many pawns here for school and yeah this is pretty easy now the king comes over and that's the end of that so duda's going to be on eight and a half up in the leading group as well and uh let's see what else is going on this game is pretty much over uh kovalenko okay well kovalenko is actually fighting in uh, his home country over in Ukraine it, he's a very talented grandmaster and there's been pictures of him on the front line and um, he's uh, you know he lost that game to hands but you know it can't be easy can it when you're literally over there doing that if you can hear meowing it's obviously that we've got a cat now trying to get in diesel but uh, these will have to wait. There's only one more game to go. And 
other games going on. Okay, well, we have Rook versus Bishop. The way to draw this, the Black King is going into the right corner. You go into the opposite colour corner to your Bishop. And this should be a draw now. Because uh, you can draw like this quite often. It's, it's a bit tricky at times. And White should obviously be attempting to win. But you can't actually win this position. The bishop has too many squares to escape to here. And now this is the drawing technique. If rook here, it's stalemate. That's the point. So this is, this is how you draw it. Very, very nice play by Mr. Lion, actually. This is, this is still quite hard to draw, but only move king here. Very short a time. I would lose this without a shadow of doubt. This position. Uh, on time, most likely. And white doing everything he can, but that is the 50 move rule. So well, well defended there. Uh, what's happening here? Well, black seems to have an extra queen or two and this is Demchenko winning uh, another big name and uh, I'm not sure what they're doing here why isn't Demchenko just trying to win this quickly and uh, if I was this guy I'd probably throw it, give it up now but that is the last game so we've got one more game to go and it should start any second now. And it's a big game to try and get to the very reasonable score in title Tuesday of 7 out of 11. And will we get a dragon? The dragon's quite a lot of fun. Let's just hopefully have a fun game here. No, we're going to get another Dutch, which we're scoring, scoring very heavily with, I feel, the Dutch so far. Now, my normal plan is to checkmate on h2 depending what they do if they push the c pawn that's what we go for if they push and he has so i normally just swing the queen over here and try to checkmate so we're not we're not going to mess around let's go here and i'll pawn here bishop here knight g4 checkmate is what we're what, what we're aiming to achieve and against this we can now play here but i'm gonna i'm just gonna move maneuver my knight around first this is another way to play, which I don't normally do. I normally sack the pawn straight away. But this knight, I find, is nicely positioned on f7. We don't want to allow this one normally because of the bishop, but I'm just going to step out the way so the bishop's not attacking me. If the pawn comes forwards, I might even take it, but I can come forwards, and we have to hope he doesn't get a knight there. And now it's probably time to start doing stuff. So here takes okay let's go for this now and we're gonna we you've probably seen me do this idea previously where after pawn takes i create this quite annoying pin with bishop g4 uh taking back is not crazy but this this pin gives the enemy something to consider and i was thinking that the knight must be better here than being on b8 so that's why i've delayed it because i'm hoping it has more chances to jump into the attack we've got another piece on the king side aiming to attack he can break the pin with this move but another advantage maybe having the knight here is if there's any knight g5 stuff so h3 takes 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 knight g5 we can just take it this knight is well positioned and he's gone for this he's decided he wants to break the pin but he's got to have a good follow-up here because now knight g4 would be crushing if i can get this moving this is the standard attack now, if I go knight g4 here, we're dropping stuff. So I expect we should play here. And now f3, and we're going to have to think. We didn't. He didn't play f3, so can't I just go knight takes knight? And I think it's game over. But a very standard attack. That Some of these Dutch games today have just been pretty clockwork, right? I mean, they've been straightforward. They've been... E they've actually been like textbook attacks against good players this guy 2500 fm obviously a talented player and uh, we just destroyed him basically again in the dutch the dutch can kick ass so we get to 
7 out of 11 and we should be happy with that score i'm i'm like on the i'm on the middle of, of whether i'm happy or not to be honest um but 7 is going to be in the top 100 players out of 700 it's going to be above a lot of strong players so yeah i think i think we can be reasonably happy to to get that that score and uh we had some very exciting games there really good games in the dutch but loads of tactics loads of craziness make sure you give a like make sure you give a subscribe and uh if you want to get some material to improve your game the sale above is in the description go and have a look there's some free videos if you're not sure about it you can go and stream some of the videos see what see if you like them and that course will obviously keep you um really entertained forever you know you, you don't need much more uh, to to improve your chest to a very high standard you've got over 200 hours of video so cheers everyone thank you very much i'll be back again at some point soon uh but for now goodbye